we're going to take a look at motion blur in Solaris and Lops. I have a very simple scene set up here, just two spinning objects. If we select this one here, you'll see that it's spinning quite quickly. You'll also notice it's animated up here at object level. We also have an identical animated object, but we're animating it at SOP level and using a trail SOP to compute velocity. If we go to our stage, and we render with the default Karma render settings. We would expect to see motion blur here, but we're not. So let's see what went wrong here. If I select the Karma render settings and we look at velocity blur here, we'll see we're not using it. So if we enable that, we will see velocity blur being used for the object that did have velocity information on it. But we should have seen blur here anyway, and it is a constant topology object. We should have seen deformation blur, but that didn't work either. So that's our clue that something just isn't authored right here for rendering. The issue is that when this frame goes to render, Karma isn't aware of any information before that frame or any information after that frame. So it can't blur the frame correctly. We need to tell Karma about some time samples a little bit before and a little bit after the current frame of rendering. The good news is that there is a thing called a motion blur lop, which you would put after your Karma render settings. I'm going to include the frame sample in here. And what that does is that adds information here for blurring. I'm going to turn off our velocity blur here so that we know that we're getting deformation blur, and you can see it looks pretty good. Now, frame sample means that we are going to include the sample at our actual current render frame here. If I disable this, our blur looks fairly linear, not too good for a spinning object like this. We're only using two samples, the sample before and the sample after the current frame. Now we're using three, so we have a little bit more information to work with. We could increase that to four, and I think we'll end up with something that's looking pretty good. Going after the Karma render settings here, what it does is it uses the camera primitive here to determine the shutter open and close time. You could disable that if you needed to and manually choose that. Now this is worth diving inside and really examining what's here. You'll see that it's a cache lop, a uh, resample transform and a trail sop basically ba uh, basically stuffed inside of here. Now I'm going to disable that and I want to look at one other thing. So let's say that we write our whole thing out to disk here and we read this back in. The motion blur looks really, really off. So let's take a look at our flattened stage here and see what's going on. What we see is that the time samples here are only referencing the current frame. So the motion blur just looks off quite a bit. We need to make sure that we do have time samples authored correctly. So if I disable this, enable our cache lop here, we can see that this is blurring correctly. When I save this to disk and read it back in, now our blur looks correct. On the cache lop, I've basically set this up how it was set up in the motion blur lop. So it is worth looking at that motion blur lop and going through the documentation and understanding what it's doing so that you can make sure things are set up correctly here. Now I'm gonna disable this right now. And I wanted to show one last thing, which is that you can choose what kind of blur you're using if optionally you could use deformation blur or velocity blur like on this object here. So I have this set right now to not use any velocity blur, but I can enable that 
for velocity blur. You'll see the blur looks different now. So now it's not using the deformation blur that the render settings are telling it to. It's actually saying ignore that and please use velocity blur for me. So this is worth knowing about as well because you might have individual objects that you need to target or specify which type of blur that they should be using. This whole section here on motion blur is really worth a deep dive and it's worth going into the documentation and the example files and really working your way through it. I think it will help in the long run, especially when you run into issues and unexpected behavior that you're going to need to sit down and solve. Just understanding what's happening and why blur is working the way it is, is really worth your time.